Hi, Talita. I'm coming to you in front of room 10, right behind this beautiful tree or this beautiful tree background. Today's story is called Owen and MC. It is a true story about a remarkable friendship between a tortoise and a hippopotamus. And this story, to give you some background, takes place in Africa, in a country of Kenya. And I don't have my globe in front of me, but you guys know where that is. This is the true story of two great friends, a baby hippopotamus named Owen and a 130 year old giant tortoise named MZ. The hippo was not always friends with the tortoise. He wasn't always known as Owen and Owen was not always famous the world over. Here is how it all happened. Before the baby hippopotamus became known as, known as Owen, he lived with his mother in a group or pod with about 20 other hippos. They fed and wallowed in and around the Sabai River in Kenya, a nation on the east coast of Africa. When he was about one year old, heavy December rains flooded the river. The racing water washed Owen and his family down the river until the fresh water became salty and the river flowed into the Indian Ocean near the small coastal town of Malindi. For days, the people of Malindi tried to chase the hippos back up the river, but the hippos enjoyed grazing the grass along the shore and in the village's yards. Since hippos are the most dangerous animals in Africa and a full grown adult can weigh as much as 8,000 pounds, there was little the people could do to help. Look at those big, big animals. Almost like I got crossed between an elephant and a pig and a cow. On the morning of December 26, 2004, the sea suddenly rushed high onto the beaches and surging waves pounded the shore. Mel many of the villagers' boats were damaged and many fishermen had to be rescued. Before long, the sea was calm again, but it was a frightening time for everybody. A day passed before anyone thought to check on the hippos. The villagers now saw only one hippopotamus in the sea, a baby without his mother stranded on a sandy coral reef among the seagrass. Tired and frightened, he was unable to reach the shore on his own. Soon, hundreds of villagers and visitors were working together to help the young hippo. They knew that he would become sick if he stayed in the salty seawater for long. They used ropes, boats, fishing nets, and even cars to try to rescue him and bring him to shore safely. It was soon clear that the rescue would not be easy. Though the baby hippo was only about two feet tall, he weighed a hefty 600 pounds and was slippery and strong. And the hippo was alarmed by all the human commotion. Angrily, he broke through their nets and escaped from their ropes. Hours went by and the anxious crowds of people who gathered to fe watch feared that the hippo could not be saved. Finally, with a stronger shark net, the rescuers were able to catch the hippo. A brave visitor named Owen Sabian tackled him, stopping him long enough to let the others secure the net. This is why when it came time to choose a name for the hippo, it seemed only right that he should be called Owen. At last, the rescuers, rescuers towed the baby hippo toward land. When they reached the shore, a loud, joyous cheer went up from the thousands, men and women, boys and girls, who now crowded the beach. Their happy cries could be heard almost a mile away. Wrapped in the net, Owen was hoisted into the back of a pickup truck and brought to a shady spot. You can't see him in there, but those are all the people trying to rescue Owen. People weren't sure where Owen should be taken to next. They called Holler Park, an animal sanctuary about 50 miles away, 
near the city of Mombasa. Dr. Paula Kambu, the manager, immediately offered Owen a place to live there. She explained that he could never be returned to the wild. Since he was still a baby, he wouldn't have learned yet how to fend for himself, and he would never be welcome in another hippopod. He would be seen as an intruder and attacked. But they would take good care of him in Holler Park. Dr. Paula offered to drive to Melindy herself to bring Owen to his new home. Dr. Paula knew she would need help. She asked the chief animal caretaker, Stephen Tucci, oh, excuse me, Stephen Tui, to come along with her. She knew that Stephen had a special way with animals. Some people said he could even talk to them. Dr. Paula and Stephen quickly set off in her small truck to Melindy. Meanwhile, ecologist Sabine Bayer got to work with others at Howler Park to prepare for Owen's arrival. And that's Dr. Paula, Stephen, and Sabine. When Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived in Melindy, they helped to remove the nets and led Owen out of the pickup. But Owen became angrier than ever and charged at the people gathered around. They tried to help him calm down by wrapping a blanket around his head. That way, he wouldn't see the things that were upsetting him. But Owen was angry about that too. After many hours, about a dozen rescuers managed to move Owen from the pickup into Dr. Paula's truck, tying him so that he would be safe during the long drive to Holler Park. And there you can kind of see him down there. And I think it's kind of, it's hard for us humans to imagine that. This, it looks so scary. And I bet that hippopotamus was terrified. He didn't know that the humans were just trying to help him, but they were keeping him safe. Meanwhile, Sabine and other workers prepared a large enclosure for Owen. They chose a part of the park that had been a pond and a mud wallow as well as tall trees and brush, everything a hippo could want. The area was already home to a number of bushbacks, beret monkeys, and a giant Aldabra tortoise called MZ. MZ, whose name means wild old man in the Swahili language, was the oldest creature in the park. At about 130 years of age, he had been alive since before Stephen's great-grandmother was born. He wasn't very friendly, except to Stephen, who seemed to know just what he liked, such as getting tickled under the chin. There he is getting tickled under the chin. 130 years old. Otherwise, MZ kept to himself. No one could have guessed how MZ's life was about to change. So a 130-year-old 130, 130 his life is about to change? Finally, Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived with Owen, who was now weak and exhausted. As soon as the ropes that held him were untied, Owen scrambled from the truck directly to MZ, resting in a corner of the enclosure. Owen crouched behind MZ, the way baby hippos often hide behind their mothers for protection. At first, MZ wasn't happy about this attention. He hissed at Owen and crawled away. But Owen, who could easily keep up with the old tortoise, did not give up. Slowly as the night went on, MZ began to accept his new companion. When the park workers checked on them in the morning, Owen was snuggled up against MZ. And MZ didn't seem to mind at all. Over the next few days, MZ continued to crawl away and Owen continued to follow him. But sometimes it was Owen who would walk away from MZ and MZ who would follow. Bit by bit, MZ grew friendlier. At first, Owen wouldn't eat any of the leaves left out for him. Stephen and the other caretakers were worried that he would weaken even more. Then they noticed Owen feeding right beside MZ as if MZ were showing him how to eat. Or perhaps it was MZ's protective presence that helped Owen feel calm enough to eat. No one will ever know 
but it was clear that the bond between Owen and MC was helping the baby hippo to recover from being separated from his mother and stranded in the sea. As the weeks went on, Owen and MZ spent more and more time together. Soon, they were inseparable. Their bond remains very strong to this day. They swim together, eat together, drink together, and sleep next to each other. They rub noses. Owen leads the way to different parts of the enclosure, then MZ leads the way. Owen playfully nuzzles MZ's neck, and MZ stretches his neck forward, asking for more, just as he does when Stephen tickles him under the chin. Though both animals could easily injure each other, they are gentle with one another. A sense of trust has grown between them. Wildlife experts are still puzzled about how this unlikely friendship came to be. Most have never heard of a mammal such as Owen and a reptile such as MZ forming such a strong bond. Perhaps for Owen, it happened this way. Young hippos like Owen need their mothers in order to survive. An old, slow tortoise like MZ can never protect Owen the way a fierce mother hippo could. But since MZ's coloring and rounded shape are similar to a hippo's, it's possible that to Owen, MZ looks like the hippo mother he needs. Harder to explain is the affection that MZ seems to show for Owen. Like most Aldabra tortoises, MZ had always preferred to be alone. But sometimes these tortoises live in groups and perhaps MZ sees Owen as a fellow tortoise, the first tortoise he is willing to spend time with. Or perhaps MZ knows that Owen isn't a tortoise, but he likes him anyway. The reasons are unclear but science can't always explain what the heart already knows. Our most important friends are sometimes those we least expected. News of Owen and MC's friendship quickly spread around the world. People all over have come to love Owen, who endured so much yet never gave up, and MZ, who became Owen's friend when he needed one most. Their photographs have appeared in countless newspaper and magazine articles. Television programs and even a film documentary have been made about them. Visitors have come to Holler Park every day to meet the famous friends. Owen suffered a great loss, but with the help of many caring people and through his own extraordinary resilience, Owen has begun a new happy life. Most remarkable is the role that MZ has played. We'll never know for sure whether Owen sees MZ as a mother, a father, or a very good friend, but it really doesn't matter. What matters is that Owen isn't alone and neither is MZ. And that is the true story of Owen and MZ, two great friends. And again, at the very back was some information about Kenya, Melindi, and about hippopotami and the Aldabra tortoises. I hope you enjoyed that story. Thanks for listening.